Hi, my name is Russell. I'm the winemaker at Winters Hill Estate, and I'm here with uh, Regine Rousseau of Shall We Wine. We're going to talk about our Pinot Noir, what's happening in the winery, and just uh, especially good food. Yes, especially good food. <laughs> hey, Russell, good to see you again. I'm always uh, super excited to have our conversations, drink your wine, of course. You all know this is my favorite part, is uh, the drinking <laughs> part. So uh, 2017, Dundee Hills Pinot Noir, excited to talk about this today because uh, not only is it delicious, but it's a little different from the last vintage, right? What happened in 2017? It is. Well, 2017 was a pretty warm summer and we were really a little concerned about the fruit getting overripe. And so we, we harvested just a little bit earlier than we normally would to try to preserve all the freshness and, and, and aromas of the wine. And I'm really happy with, uh, with the results. It's a really elegant, uh, rich, long lasting, uh, balanced wine. So you said you harvested a few days early. Um, I, mm -hmm. I'm sure like I'm curious and uh, some of the people watching are curious, two, three days and does it really make that big of a difference? It really does make a big difference. Uh, it's one of the most important decisions of the year. Now, of course, it's a big vineyard. We can't pick it all on one day, uh, but we really are looking at each different block and trying to pick each block at its, at its sort of peak of ripeness. I'm excited to taste it because in the past, I know your wines for being extremely elegant, your Pinot Noirs, but they are a little bit fuller, right? So this one mm -hmm. you're saying is a little bit like more restraint than the, the other vintages? Correct. Okay. And you know, that fullness and richness, that's just part of our land and, and, and where we make our wine. And so mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of a constant, but we're just kind of turning the dial down. Let's talk about the nose on this because it's, it's mm -hmm. so pretty. Um, you know, floral, uh, what surprised me the first time I went in and smelled it is a, this really uh, spiciness on, on the nose. What's that coming from? Is that just from the vintage or? It is. Well, you know, that spice is a really consistent character for us in warmer vintages. So like 2017, um, it was a warm summer that really brings out some of that black pepper, some of that black licorice. Mm -hmm. um, and in this wine, you know, it's just got real beautiful aromas to me, almost kind of a rose petal perfume uh, aroma coming through as well. Absolutely. And I, that black licorice and black pepper, that, that is so pronounced on the nose. And more black fruit for me, like black cherries, black berries, and um, it's, it smells as good as it tastes. I, okay, I think it tastes better. <laughs> so... For me, on the palate, I get a lot of the same flavors, right? Uh, black fruit, uh, black cherries, black um, berries, black licorice, a really beautiful earthiness to this wine. Um, what, mm -hmm. what are you getting? What are some of the flavors you got from it? Well, I love to hear you say that because, you know, those, those rich flavors and that earthiness, that's really kind of what we're shooting for uh, mm -hmm. with our wines. We're just trying to express it in a little more balanced, more elegant, uh, more elegant fashion. And I'm, I'm really pleased with, uh, with what we've got. Very fresh, very um, sophisticated, elegant, but you know you're drinking this pure style of Pinot Noir, right? All of the Pinot Noir essence, but to me, like, you're right, like more elegant, more restrained than in the past. It is super, super pretty. Gorgeous. Okay, so you know my favorite thing is, uh, what are we gonna eat with this? This time of year, one of my favorite uh, dishes is, uh, is salmon. Mm -hmm. But what I like to do is cook it the day before. Mm -hmm. uh, I seal it up in some uh, aluminum foil with some spices, some lemon, and uh, cook it in the oven, and then chill it overnight, and then serve it chilled uh, the next day. And on a hot afternoon with a nice green salad, uh, yes. It's just the perfect, uh, perfect pairing for this wine. Okay. I love that. You're going to have to 
do like a cooking video to teach us how to make this salmon. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also thinking like um, carpaccio would be really mm. interesting with this. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Delicious, delicious. I think that would be a really beautiful pairing. So you all know if you watch any of our conversations, <laughs> it's all about food for me. I love to eat <laughs> and I love to think about how food and wine work uh, together because that's the whole point, right? The wine should make the food taste better. The food should make the wine taste better. So I think that would be um, amazing. Oh, oh, one more thing. Okay, one more thing. Like, uh, you know, like a pulled pork sandwich? Mm-hmm. But this would be really delicious too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The flavor from the sauce, a paired with all of this like dark berry cherry flavors. Oh, okay. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious what's happening in the winery right now? What are you working on? Well, it's a, it's a busy time of year in the winery and we're getting ready for, uh, for bottling. And so there's a lot of preparation uh, that goes into that. Okay. So how long does bottling take? Are you giving, you know, are you giving yourself a week, days? How long does it take? Well, so bottling takes sort of weeks of preparation, mm -hmm. but the actual bottling happens just on one or two days. Okay. Uh, we work with, uh, you know, we have all our equipment here to make our wine throughout the year. But then for bottling day, we hire... Uh, a company with a full bottling line in a truck. And so they'll roll up here and set up uh, in the door of our winery. They've got all the high tech equipment. They've got really high quality machines. They've got really experienced operators to, to run the equipment and make sure it's working perfectly. Uh, and so our job is to have everything ready to go on that, on that bottling day. Okay, so they come in, they help you bottle. And then one of the things that I find really lovely, interesting about your wines is this cool little cap that you have on. Do they put that on for you or how does that work? So we do, we put that on ourselves and we have a special tool that allows us to go through and put a little drop of hot wax on the top of every single bottle. So it's, uh, it's one more time. Each bottle gets touched by loving, uh, loving hands here. Whoa, wait a minute. So you're manually <laughs> doing that? It is. I mean, we uh, we kind of open the boxes and go through and, and put just a little drop of wax on the top sure. of each uh, each cork. If you ask 100 winemakers, nobody is going to tell you that their favorite part of the job is bottling. <laughs> well, you know what? It, it might be boring to you, but for us who don't get to see that part, I think it's really fascinating. And one of the questions I have is about recycling like what is there a recycling program i know how many bottles i go through on a monthly basis so i'm glad that i, <laughs> I did my best to recycle but yeah tell us about that so a really high percentage of wine bottles do get recycled uh and then i and then the glass itself you know we're using uh this antique green that's got a pretty high percentage of recycled content in the bottle okay. uh I think an important thing that we're doing is we're using a little lighter weight bottle. Mm -hmm. So we're not using such a heavy bottle uh, because the wine can't tell how thick the glass is on the bottle, right? Mm -hmm. And so by using a little bit lighter weight bottle, we're reducing our energy costs in producing the bottle and then also in transport when, the, when it gets trucked to our winery and when it gets shipped uh, by FedEx to your home. Uh, if it's a little bit lighter bottle, that saves every step of the way. And so that's something we're doing to try to reduce our, our energy use and our, our footprint there. That's really good information because I think that there's a misconception that a heavier bottle protects the wine in some way. Um, so I think that that's really important to, you know, to talk about. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I think our nature is bigger looks better. And yes. so a bigger bottle does look more impressive and more attractive. Mm -hmm. But if, uh, if you just kind of take a step back and, you know, we're really focused on what's inside the bottle. Yes. So that's what we're trying to give to you. And what's inside the bottle is deliciousness. <laughs> <laughs> Russ, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for another delicious episode. <laughs> uh, this was fun. If you have, if this is your first time catching us together, 
we have other episodes. So please uh, follow us on YouTube and check out all of the Winter's Hill and Shall We Wine episodes. Cheers. <laughs>